Hey guys, it's Madison, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about my 2023 language learning goals, fashionably late as always. Um, but yeah, if you saw my last video, I went over um, how 2022 went. I ended up failing almost all of my goals, but I still felt like overall it was a, a decent year regardless. Um, but yeah, based on the successes and failures of last year, I'm going to be setting up some goals for this year. And I tend to be kind of rambling in these videos, so I'm gonna try and keep it pretty short. So yeah, let's start with Mandarin Chinese. I was really inconsistent with learning Mandarin Chinese last year. And so this year, my goal is to study Mandarin consistently throughout the year. And by that, I mean in every month of the year, I'm hoping to study some Mandarin, um, ideally several days or, you know, a lot of days in each month, but I don't want to do what I usually tend to do and have a couple months of being good at studying and then many months of just ignoring the language altogether. I do, like I said in my last video, I do watch quite a few Mandarin dramas. Um, so Mandarin is generally always in my life but I want to be actively studying every month. I don't really care what that looks like. It could be, you know, do Chinese, the app, or it could be, um, last year I took a couple of mock HSK exams and I've been meeting ever since then to go through and like go over the questions and look at the characters in each question, that kind of stuff. I don't care really what it is. I just want to be actively studying some each month. And obviously I do also want to continue watching dramas as well. It's always a great way to get lots of exposure to the language and kind of naturally pick up things without even having to study. Moving on to Japanese. Um, my Japanese goal is very similar. I just want to consistently study throughout the year. Um, Japanese was terrible last year. I studied for the first couple months and then just did nothing ever again the entire year. And so this year, just like um, for Mandarin Chinese, I want to be studying a little bit at least of Japanese every single month. I also have a couple like slightly more specific goals. Like for example, I would love to finish all of the Irodori textbooks, which are the free online textbooks that the Japanese government or some program puts out online. Um, I would love to go through those. I really enjoy those. And so um, it shouldn't be difficult. It's just a matter of actually sticking with it. So hopefully I can get through all of those textbooks this year. If I can't, um, it's no biggie as long as I'm actively studying throughout the year. And hopefully by the end of the year, my goal is to just be a lot better at recognizing kanji and um, just having a lot higher of like reading ability, I guess, in Japanese. I still um, have the ever-present struggle of finding any actual content that I enjoy in Japanese. So I'm kind of uh, pessimistic about my abilities to actually reach fluency in Japanese just because I know that watching TV has been a huge part of my success in um, both Korean and Mandarin. And so I'm kind of wondering if it's possible to reach fluency at all in Japanese without having content that I enjoy. Um, so I might here and there try to find some things that I like to watch, but for now I'll just be content to um, read some short articles and that kind of stuff and just study through mostly through reading until I can maybe find something that I enjoy in the language. And if I don't reach fluency, then whatever. Um, but it is a language that for now I do want to continue to study. So yeah, that's Japanese. Moving on to the final language, which is Korean, which is my primary target language, um, especially since I live and work in Korea. Um, I consider myself fluent in Korean, but that does not stop me from needing to improve for sure, um, because I'm not perfect. I'm just uh, decently fluent. And since it is my primary target language, I have a lot more specific kind of goals about Korean compared to just study more um, and study more consistently for Mandarin and Japanese. So I kind of broke it down into different categories. Um, first of all, reading. This was one of my goals last year as well, to read a lot more in Korean. And I kind of abysmally failed that. I read a little bit, but not a lot. Um, and so this year I am resetting that goal. I would love to read a lot more in Korean. Ideally, I would love to read about a book a month. Um, and I would love to mix it up, some nonfiction, some fiction, um, just to expand my vocabulary. My reading speed is still not where I would love it to be. I would love to speed that up throughout the year. And the only way to do that is to get a lot of reading practice in. So I would love to read at least 12 books throughout this year. Hopefully I can. At the very least, I want to read some books this year um, because, yeah, I need to read more and expand my vocabulary. Next up is writing. Um, on the topic exam, my writing has always been my lowest score by far, and that's because my writing is not great in Korean. Out of all the things I do in Korean, I write the absolute least. And so I really need to improve that area. 
of my Korean. Now, to be fair, I don't need writing a ton in my daily life, but it's one of those things I don't want to be great at Korean and then set this one week area. So I would love to improve and get it up to a much higher level. And so to do that, I just want to start writing a lot more in my daily life as well. And moving on to the final um, area of Korean that I would really love to improve, and that is speaking. Um, I have been talking a lot about my Korean speaking recently because I took the Korean speaking um, test, the Topic Paragi Shiom, and I got level four out of six. And so while I consider that still to be fluent, like I'm able to converse with my friends without a lot of issues, um, I have in ha here and there and some things I can't explain very well, but I'm able to understand and talk about a wide variety of things with relative ease, um, but not perfect, amazing, flawless ease, if that makes sense. And so I would really love to get a lot better at speaking, um, widen my vocabulary when speaking, widen the number of structures that I naturally use. I tend to kind of use the same, you know, however many structures without kind of branching out and trying new things. And the only way to improve speaking again is to do more of it. And um, so basically my main goal for speaking is to get out of my freaking house more. Like I live in Korea now, but my little introverted self doesn't leave the house. Like it's really uh, a problem. And I've had this goal for a while to like get out of the house and like make Korean friends or get out of the house and get involved in my community, meet more Koreans and therefore speak more Korean. But even though in the grand picture of things, I would love to do this on a daily basis, the choice is always easier to just stay home and chill <laughs> than to leave the house and interact with, with people. So that is my major goal this year, make more Korean friends. I get along well with my colleagues at work, but I work at an American university in Korea. And so we speak English at work. And so when I'm only going to work and then home, I'm not really getting much Korean speaking. So I need to make some more friends outside of work. I would love to get more involved in doing things in Korea, whether it be tennis, or swing dancing, which I've been meaning to get back into. So hopefully I will be able to actually finally leave my house this year a lot more often and get more involved and do more things in life and therefore end up speaking more Korean um, while doing that. And hopefully through doing this, um, one of the goals I had last year that I definitely failed was to be able to express my personality more in Korean or be more myself while speaking Korean. Um, because while I'm able to converse relatively easily in Korean. I feel like my personality doesn't get fully expressed in Korean just because of the limitations that I still do have. And so hopefully by getting out there, getting more involved, speaking more throughout this year, I'll be able to, like I want to, um, express my personality more fully um, in Korean through that practice. So those are my Korean goals in terms of um, reading, writing, and speaking. And then a couple of other goals that I do have as well related to Korean. First, I would love to take a Korean class while I'm there. I think um, in my area, they offer some free Korean classes. Last semester, I didn't take it because I was worried that like the grammar points or like the textbook would be below my level, even for the advanced class. But honestly, like, like I said, for my speaking, uh, one of my goals is just to like speak with more ease and like more fluidly. And so even if like the grammar or like technical level is not exactly where I'm at, I think speaking in that class will still, still be good for me. So I want to hopefully take a Korean class. I also want to take the topic exam again, um, just like the regular one because mine expired last year. And so I would like to take it again to have an active certification again. And also since I want to improve my writing, that'll be a good way to test and see if I have improved my writing and give me kind of a motivating factor um, and a time crunch for practicing and improving my writing as well. Another goal I have is to watch more Korean news. Um, I've had this goal for a while and I just never really do it because I'm just not a person who watches the news anyway. Um, but there's so much good vocabulary about such a wide variety of topics in the news, as well as a lot of Hansa-based vocabulary and political vocabulary that I just don't encounter very much in my regular life that I would love to know more of. And I think reading will also help me improve that, but just watching the news ever so often, even though I'm you know, not a huge fan of the news, I think will really be beneficial to me. So hopefully I can watch news here and there throughout the year. Um, I'm never gonna be a person who watches the news daily, but hopefully I can at least increase my news exposure in Korean. And then finally, this kind of relates to my get out of the house thing as well. I would love to travel a lot more in Korea. A couple of years ago, I made a video about like the regrets that I had for my time living in Korea 
And one of them was not like getting out of the house more and making more Korean friends and stuff like I already mentioned. And another one was not traveling more in Korea. Like I moved all the way to the other side of the world and I don't leave my house. Like I should really make the most of it and explore more around Korea besides just my tiny little neighborhood and my university where I work. So I would love to travel a lot more in Korea. Um, I've mentioned before, I'm not really a solo traveling kind of person, but I'm gonna try and change that at least a little bit. Um, I can start off easy and just visit the friends that I already have in Korea that I haven't had the chance to visit yet because I just haven't made it down to Daegu yet because it's kind of far from where I live in Songdo. Um, but I do also want to kind of take that step and travel around more of Korea and see more of Korea. I'm not doing myself any favors by just holding up inside my apartment and just seeing my four walls and watching YouTube and dramas. So I really want to travel a lot more around Korea um, while I had the chance. I'm not sure how long I'm going to live in Korea, probably at least a couple years, but I don't want to spend it all just at work and at home. So yeah, ideally I would travel around once a month. We'll see if I do it that often, but I think I can. Like, I think I, I, it's definitely feasible for me to travel once a month, even if it's just to a part of Seoul or that kind of thing. It's something that I really want to do. It's something that I never want to actually do in the moment, but I know I would love it um, while it's happening and really appreciate it later. So I can do it, medicine. I can leave the house in 2023 and explore more of Korea and yeah. So anyway, like I said, I have a lot of goals related to Korean, but I feel like they are all achievable. Like they're not out of this realm crazy. Um, leaving the house and practicing reading and writing more is not um, unachievable. So hopefully I can do those. I have a couple of general life goals as well, or general like language learning goals. Um, a lot of them are very similar or the same as last year. Um, first of all, be more consistent in language learning in general, which honestly is kind of part of my other goals as well, as you could see. Um, the second general goal is to keep track of my language learning. I had this goal last year. I achieved it for part of last year, and it was really nice to have those records to go back and look at. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use an app like Polylogger or just write it in a notebook. I tend to really like how it looks in the notebook and I like being able to like flip through and see what I did for different months. I like color coding it so I can just flip through and be like, wow, so much Korean, wow, so much Chinese without having to actually like read the words on the page. So hopefully I'll be able to keep some sort of written track, but if not, it's not the end of the world, but I want to. The next goal is to be more consistent in uploading these videos, which I did decently at last year, not amazingly. I'd like to improve even more and be even more consistent and uh, frequent in uploading these videos. Making YouTube videos really inspires me to do things like make a trip somewhere in Korea and film it, or to study more languages and film it and share um, with you guys here on the internet. So I think making more videos will really help me to do the other goals on my list. So hopefully I can do that. And then finally, a new one. Um, I would love to write an academic journal article this year, um, which isn't really connected directly to learning languages, but it's a goal that I've had for a while. Um, working in academia like I do as a professor. Number one, it's just good for my career, but number two, it's something I enjoy doing in grad school, writing my thesis, even though it was a, a lot of work and pain at the time. Um, it was really enjoyable to do research about a topic that I loved and to write something academic about it, and so I would love to do it again this year, to write at least one journal article and hopefully start it through the track of getting published as well, but We'll see. The first step is to start researching and writing the actual article. So hopefully I will be able to actually start that goal and see it to fruition this year. We will see at the end of the year. So yeah, those are my goals for 2023. I'd love to hear any goals that you have set for yourselves as well, either language learning related or not. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I had to say at this time. So until next time, annyeong.